this video we're going to cover Docker from scratch. Now, we're not going to cover why Docker and because we're going to make the assumption that you already know why you're going to be using Docker rather than a VM. Uh, number two, why Docker from scratch? Well, let's say that you don't trust the off-the-shelf um, Docker images and you don't know what they might be in them. So other than the secure ones in terms of ones directly from providers like Apache or perhaps Microsoft or a few others, you say, no, nah, I just don't trust them. Even then, probably you don't trust them. Anyway, with that aside, let's get into the video. So we're going to go ahead and install Docker on our Linux machine. Um, these days you can also do it on Windows, but since for most of you who are playing around with Docker, it's most likely already on Linux or a Mac machine. So um, if you've got Mac, that's it's straightforward, just go follow the package instructions. If you're on Ubuntu like I am, uh, just download the docker.io package and you're set to go. So as you can see, it's relatively straightforward and installs in a few seconds. So after you've got Docker installed, you're gonna need to start creating Docker files if you plan to create custom images. You can do it other ways, but this is probably the most sensible one. So I'm gonna go ahead and create my folder and create my first Docker file. So the first thing I'm gonna need is from, which is a, the, in this case gonna be the base image. So I'm gonna go with Ubuntu and latest. I could specify a version, but I'm not going to. And I'm gonna run the command and I'm gonna do an echo out hello world, just to prove that we can create a Docker file and from that create the image. So now that we've got Docker file ready, we're going to use the docker build command to build out that image. That's just gonna go ahead and pull in our base image for Ubuntu, straightforward. Now, after that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna run Docker, but in this case, since I didn't give the package a name, we're gonna to have to go have a look and see what it is. So if I use the Docker image and list all the ones, you can see there's a one that doesn't have a name and it was created three minutes ago. So that will be the one that obviously is the one I just created. So I recommend always using names when creating packages. So do use the dash minus T and give it a name. But if you don't, you can always find it. Now, as you can see, we run our Docker and we got a hello world output. But if we do the Docker PS, we can see that there is no process running. And the reason for this is because it's completed its command. So let's look at a slightly more complex version of this. So we already have our image. Um, we're gonna just do a quick tidy up now by removing um, our unnamed image for argument's sake, because later on we might not know what that is. So you can see I get a conflict telling me I can't remove it because I still have a Docker container effectively in the list. So I'm just gonna remove the container and then I'll be allowed to remove the image since they're associated. So I'm gonna remove uh, this container and then I'm gonna go ahead and remove the image for tidy up purposes. So with the image removed, let's start again and create a slightly more complex, um, let's say file, in this case, Docker container. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to go back to our, our Docker file we're going to build it this time and with correctly with the name so that we can show that how it would look comparatively uh, so just as an example I'm going to call it my Ubuntu, well sorry Ubuntu build my app it could be anything but just as an example um, we're going to go ahead and you'll see that we now have an image with that name which is very important it's good to have images with names I'm now going to run that image in order to basically start up the container. And what you're gonna see is that it will, again, produce the hello world. And again, will pretty much die off immediately if I go do a uh, Docker PS to see what's running. Um, you'll see that it's not running. So it effectively exited out after the command finished. And that's the important thing to know, why you have the, the commands. Because once the command is finished, it will actually close out the uh, docker container so as an example if you want the docker container to run longer you need something that will stay in the docker container as a uh, running command so let's go ahead and do some better examples 
First of all, let's do the most important thing that you can do with any container. We, let's keep it up to date. So we're going to do the regular um, app get and at, uh, get install. So first of all, we have a, a check package. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to install. In this case, I'm going to install um, with the no uh, install uh, recommends because we don't want additional packages. We don't want to bloat out our container because amongst other things that's the point of containers is to keep them as small as possible. And I'm going to install curl and then I'm going to make sure that I clean out anything that I don't need. I could use the auto remove. Highly recommend that you consider that. Um, and we're also going to show you just quickly that you can use the uh, slash carrier to add lines so that you don't need to have this wall of text that scrolls off far too far to read and you get then lost. And I'm just going to take out the CMD and we'll come back to that a little later. So this is just going to go ahead and install a Docker container and within that will be curl. Nothing more, nothing less. So with this I'm going to build it. should be a straightforward. I'm going to build uh, my app and hit, by the way this is one of the things you should watch out for. Capital letters are not supported. So we're going to do it with lowercase and as you can see that runs quite comfortably. Now, since I already know in advance that when I run this, because there's no CMD, it's just going to kill out, I'm going to run it as an interactive session. So if I do the docker run uh, dash IT, which is the interactive session, and then the name of the app, it will actually take me to a console, or command, as I wish. So in this case, I want to go to the bin bash, because I want to run the bash shell. And I'll quickly have a look. I can run bash commands. I can check that curl is installed. And I can even run some curl commands just to do some basic check. So all's good. So I exit out of that back. And I'm going to just go ahead and prove that there is no running container after I've exited. So once I've exited the container, even if I just use the, the ITs and the exits, it, it's, it's closed out. And if I use the D to run it as a daemon, um, again, if I go back and look at the PS, you can see it stopped because, again, there's no command to run. So, effectively, it fires it up and immediately closes it down. So, let's look at a complete config now. What one would look like if you were building the application from scratch. So, here's an example configuration where I've got my command running basically Apache from command line. I've got all the updates and some sample configuration for the Apache in my Docker file. So I'm going to go ahead and build this now and then I'm going to run it just to check that all runs as expected. So you can see it build quite quickly uh, since the baseline caches and other containers that it relies on are already there. Uh, I'm just going to run it, and you can see we're using the dash p, so I'm going to put the port out from the exposed 80, which is the internal, out to 80, only in this case I can't because there's already one running on it. So I'm just going to make this much easier, I'm going to put 8000 in there. So locally on my host, it's now exposed with port 8000, which we can see here, which just goes off the edge of the screen and pops to the other side. So let's just check that uh, Apache is up and running as we expect it to. So we're going to do a port 8000 local and we can see Apache is running. So I'm going to go ahead and basically uh, stop this uh, container and then we're going to do a bit more tweaks to it. So dreamy hover is going to be stopped and then we're going to quickly uh, modify the file. So there's a few other things that you might want to do. So as an example, let's say you have your Apache web server. One of the things you might want to do is look at some health checks. So let's build out a health check. Health checks are pretty easy to do. Um, anything that you can do from command line that checks your application is doable. So in this case, our first one is we're going to tell it we want a health check and we want the interval. So how often should we check? And we're going to say every 15 seconds. Uh, then we're going to go retries how many times before something becomes unhealthy. So let's say five. And then a timeout value because we need potentially a response to come. And so if the response takes longer than that period, 
we have a timeout. So in this case, we're saying timeout is 30 seconds. We also have a start period because it might take a while for the application to start up. So in this case, 30 seconds, maybe if you've got something like Tomcat, we will uncompact war files. That might be a minute or even five, potentially even 10. Um, and in this case, I'm gonna use curl to go and check the local host. Now, since I only have Apache here, I'm gonna add on curl so that we have the curl installed as well. And that basically completes our example config. So I'm just gonna save this and then I'm gonna build it again. So you don't have to do builds every time separately. Um, although it is a good and easy practice, you can actually do a build on top of a build like I'm doing now, where it's just basically updating on top of the existing one. So this is just gonna run through all the previous actions that we had. Um, plus some additional ones. In this case, we're gonna add on the health check to the container. So as you can see, it takes a little while because it's running through all the same steps as we had before, in this case, updating packages, etc. But as slow as this might seem, and as crazy as it seems, this is really, really useful from the point of view that it gives you the ability to say that my container is secure as it's up to date with the latest packages. So I'm just going to expose the ports again. I'm going to run my um, web server. And we should see now I can put the latest or I can put previous versions if I have some. Now what you could probably see is that Apache is running. Um, if we go back to the console a second, you'll also see there's this new status next to it telling us that uh, it health check is starting. So if we look again, we can see health is healthy which proves that our health check that we created is actually running and that it's being able to report that the container is okay. That concludes our video. Hopefully you found it useful. If you did, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, give us a thumbs down and like and subscribe for more content.